pleasure of introducing, as you all know already, Mary Regan to you, um, who has does a lot of volunteer work with our senior center, and we are so appreciative of it. And she has volunteered to entertain you guys today. So sit back and enjoy, and I present Mary Regan. <laughs> So I turned the microphone on. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really good. Okay. I want to introduce you to Brendan. Hello, Hi. Hi. Nice to meet everyone. Brendan is a volunteer videographer for the television station, and he has promised not to record any of my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really good news. Um, so when this program was first suggested to me, this was not my idea. Um, I was. It was suggested that it be called the Golden Oldies. And the first person that came to my mind was Johann Sebastian Bach. Definitely golden, definitely oldie. Uh, born in 1685, died in 1750. And um, I wanted to start with him because he's almost unique among composers because he was happily married. He loved being a father, he loved being a husband. When his first wife died, he married a second time. Uh, the second wife could not read music, was not a musician. And uh, he very patiently taught her. And he wrote music, especially for her, a beginner. We still have that music. It's called the Anna Magdalena Bach Book One, Anna Magdalena Bach Book Two. And so it's real Bach music, but it's very simple. Um, second thing about him was he had a job. He had a real job. He was actually able to support himself and his family. Very unusual for a composer. And thirdly, he composed music um, all the time, all kinds of music. Music for the choir in his church uh, every Sunday. He was, a, he was an organist. He was known as an organist rather than as a composer. Uh, in those days, all music was live, and people came together for competitions between organists, and he was known as a great organist. So he was really, really a unique person. So I wanted to start with a piece written by him. He wrote church music. He wrote a lot of different kinds of music. Um, this kind of music is a small piece. Most composers write small pieces. And uh, this, some of his composers, compositions were called preludes, but some were called inventions. This one is called an invention. It's in the key of A minor. And uh, I really like A minor because I like the sound of it, but I also like it because it's mostly played on the white keys. <laughs> so I'm going to attempt the Bach invention. Music. 
and uh, eventually became a composer of many pieces for the keyboard, long pieces, short pieces. Um, he also wrote beautiful vocal music. At some point, he decided to compose symphonies, huge music. And somewhere along the line, he decided, I think I'll try my hand at opera. So he wrote all that kind of music. The sad news about this man is when he died, he was desperately poor. He was so poor that even though they know what cemetery he was born uh, buried in, no one knows where his grave is because there was no money to pay for a stone. If he were alive today, he'd be a millionaire over, over many times because his music today is played, performed, recorded everywhere in the world. And who was this lovely person? Mozart. Died very young, uh, from uh, 1756 to 1791, so just barely 35. Great composer, tremendous numbers of music, but <coughs> extremely poor at the end. He was married, uh, not too happily, there were no children, so I wish that he were alive today. He would be a happy man and he'd have lots of money. So this is just, this is just a very tiny piece, this is very small, uh, of one of his very famous sonatas for piano. It's in the key of C major, which as you know I like because it's on the white keys. <laughs> <laughs> scales in his music. So this was just the beginning of a sonata in C major, just the very beginning of it. So then we move along to the year 1809. Now another person is born in Poland. His father was French, his mother was Polish, and that's why he has a French name. And um, what kind of life did he have? Well, he was given piano lessons early on. He learned very well. He eventually moved to Paris which was the center of the musical world at that time. And um, it didn't go so well for him. He did not like to perform. He didn't like all your eyes on him. <laughs> he, didn't, he felt uncomfortable with people watching him. But that was one way to make money. So he gave piano lessons. Well, you know how it is with piano lessons. People don't always come. They don't always pay. Did not go well for him. Not married. Uh, at, at the time, just before he was dying, he said to his sister, burn all my music. Mercifully, she didn't do that. <laughs> so we have his music, and this is Frederick Chopin. Playing the music by Chopin is a real specialty, and uh, most of his music is extremely difficult and fast. So I picked a piece of music that is short and slow. <laughs> and, <laughs> and also, uh, I like this piece because normally, uh, in any piece of music, the melody is in the upper notes, the higher notes, but in this case, the melody is in the bass, the lower notes. And it almost sounds like a cello playing. So this is in the key of B minor.
representatives of the great composers of Europe. But what was going on in the United States? Uh, so during the 1800s, we had um, a new kind of music in the United States, completely American. And this is the music that's called the spiritual. And the spirituals today are even still very popular. And so I'm just going to play an example of one of them. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen but Jesus. And this is a good example, a good representative of American music. This is unique American music. This did not come from Europe. This is something that was developed here in the United States. Thank you. 
once we got into the 1900s, we began to have this invention called radio, and then we had movies, and eventually we had movies with sound. So eventually we had recordings, and so then we get into all kinds of different kinds of popular music. So that's what I'm going to do, play a series of popular music from way back when, and hopefully if you know some of the words, you can sing along. So this is, this is the first one. You have a list, you have a list on your program. Many of the words start with this letter of the alphabet, and it's a novelty song. It's not. It's not. Um, the music is in different categories. This is a novelty song. It's a fun song. So, if you know the alphabet, you can sing along. <laughs>
having the singers sing this for the next next concert because it's a fun song. This is a totally different type of song, this next one. Jerry Bell, maybe some of you will remember, was that the right singer? Uh, Rags to Riches, I like this. Thank you. 
origin of Count Every Star, I just like it. I just like it. I like the rhythm of it. So. contiguous United States, little Hawaiian. It's from the movie, An Affair to Remember, uh, that great movie with Cary Grant and Deborah Carr, which was actually shown here at the Senior Center a few, a few months ago. Um, this was the hit song, and it, it looked as if it was being sung by Deborah Carr, but it was probably done by another <coughs> singer. But a lovely, lovely piece of music. <laughs>
your program now, and the list continues. Uh, this song, The Little White Cloud, Cloud That Cried, I think I remember this as a hit song by Johnny Ray. Yeah. Does that sound right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I love this song. So if you know the words, just hum along.
the loveliest night of the year. This comes from a great movie called The Great Caruso with Mario Lanza and Anne Blythe. And so this was one of the hit songs. This is a waltz. So if you feel like waltzing, this is your opportunity. <laughs> I think this was a hit song that he made 100 years ago on radio, great singer, Blue Moon.
in the Fountain comes from the great movie of the same name, Three Coins in the Fountain. Mostly, up, we think, for filmed in, in Rome. <laughs>
because of you.
wrong. I, I am not sure, but I think this was a Rodgers and Hammerstein's uh, program on, on Broadway, but I don't remember the name of the, of the uh, program. I don't remember the name of the show. I just love the song, so that's why we're doing No Other Love Have I. So you can't do better than end with a Dean Martin song, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is from an 
anonymous donor. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>